right here we made it to Disney World's Epcot Center for the 2019 Food and Wine Festival, which goes on through November 23rd. I was excited. Yeah, so we challenged ourselves to eat every single gluten-free item that they had to offer, and we're going to share our experience with you. Also at the Food and Wine Festival, they give you a, a little passport book with stickers and you can put the stickers on the page of that uh, country of the global marketplace that you visited. So that was really a, a nice little option there. And so our first stop at the Food and Wine Festival was Active Eats. And at Active Eats, we tried the spice crusted salmon along with the fruit and nut energy snack. And here is a photo of the entire menu in case you would like to see the other offerings they have at this location. And here at Active Eats that we tried the spice crusted verlasso salmon with Uncle Ben's quinoa and ancient grains medley, crushed avocado and sherry vinegar. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Man, it was one of the best salmon I have ever had. As you can tell, as I'm digging in, oh, look at the expression on my face. I was like, oh, I wish I had a bigger portion right now. Man. So I'm glad he left me some so I could try it. I think one of my uh, favorite parts was the crushed avocado that was on top. It was very, very tasty. We both loved it, so we were trying to... Uh, decide who was going to get to eat the rest of it. Next, we had the fruit and nut energy snack, which was a house-made mixture of apricots, almonds, pecans, coconut, puffed rice, and chocolate chips. Man, I was interested in eating this, especially when I saw the chocolate drizzle that was on top of it. Everything else about the nuts and the fruits, oh, definitely, you know, the energy sack itself, but it's nice and topped off with that chocolate. It made it nice and chewy, and I knew it was going to give me energy throughout the day. Nice snack after the salmon. And you get a good-sized portion, as you see there. Um, it's, like, nice and coconutty. I love coconut. So I really enjoyed that. Um, it was really warm outside. So I was getting very messy. You'll see me lift my hands up and you'll see all the chocolate all over my hands here in a moment. But yeah, I really did enjoy that. It's pretty good. <laughs> On those type of days, you need to eat fast. All right, next, we went to the chocolate studio to try out the liquid nitro chocolate almond truffle with warm whiskey caramel. And here is the menu that they have out front. And you can see the GF at the top right there. What we're going to try, the gluten-free. And there it is. Man, this thing was nice and tasty. We really enjoyed it. Look how the size, which I almost lost it because of the wind and, and how it slid on the plate. But, man, I just couldn't wait to go... To dip into this i was like mm, mm, mm. it reminded me of ice cream so it was you know really creamy it was good we definitely enjoyed it definitely would get it again of course and i'm glad that you mentioned ice cream because it reminded me of like a more of a melted ice cream you know that was already melted down a little bit and that's that's the way i really like my ice cream next we went to australia and they had three gluten-free options was pretty exciting so we got the grilled sweet and spicy shrimp the roasted lamb chop and the deconstructed pavlova so yeah we had a whole handful here now here's the full menu if you want to see the other offerings that they have at this location now robert tried the roasted lamb chop i do not eat lamb because i i don't know i just can't think about eating baby animals but hey it looked good and uh, i think robert enjoyed it oh and this bird here it was hilarious because he was really scouting out our food yeah. so rob what do you think of this lamb chop the lamb I, one thing that really stood out that it was salty but it, the saltiness wasn't overpowering it was like it was just a just enough upon it that gave the meat the flavoring there were some fatty edges and everything um which i know that's um made it for the flavoring but uh other than that with all the berries and and the other drizzle and everything on top of it it was really good i really enjoyed it because it brought out um, the sweet t potato puree and, and the pea salad and the pistachio and pomegranate. 
I don't know how to say it, gremolata or whatever. It all combined in it, and it all mixed really well with the saltiness of that meat. And, yeah, that bird boy, he was like, hey, what you going to give me? I'm here for you. <laughs> it was hilarious. Um, so next we tried, or I tried, the grilled sweet and spicy shrimp, and it had pineapple, pepper, onion, and snap peas in there. So it was good. Um, I personally would not purchase it again for myself because it was a lot of spice. It was just like on that borderline where, you know, I could feel a little bit of the fire <laughs> coming on in my mouth. So definitely if you like spice, I'm sure you're going to, and shrimp, you're going to like this one, but it was just a little too much kick for me personally. Um, Robert, he's not a fan of shrimp, but he did try the vegetables. So what did you think of the vegetables? I enjoyed the flavoring. Uh, you could taste like uh, of the cayenne, uh, of the pineapples, the peppers and the onions, and also with the snap peas, uh, the flavoring upon it, it. It gave you a little bit of a kick and it made me appreciate, you know, eating those vegetables because I just don't like eating them plain. And then next, we both tried the deconstructed pavlova uh, with the pastry cream, citrus, um, berries, and lemon myrtle meringue. And so this one was kind of a surprise. So you can tell us your thoughts first. <laughs> You know the the berries and that lemon mer and the lemon myrtle and I guess it's some meringue I guess um, was all of that together was good but what really threw us off was those white stars I kept thinking well that's that's the meringue you know it remind me of a, a deconstructed meringue uh, berry meringue pie or something and when you bit into it it just like it was like hollow um, it was I don't know it was it was different you know it was it was a surprise. Yeah, I thought that the white stars on top was going to be more like a cream um, because that's what it said in the description, like a pastry cream. And so when I grabbed it and I was like, well, this texture is kind of different. And then I and I ate it. I mean, it's it's hard. It's not like a cream. But I mean, when you put it in your mouth, it just melts and it's um, it, it's really light and it. It disintegrates in your mouth pretty fast. So, I mean, I love the berries and um, that lemon, um, I guess, meringue that the berries are in. I don't know. The stars on top, I, I wasn't crazy about the texture. So I wouldn't buy it again. Next, we went to Canada. Now, I was really excited about going to Canada because the last time that I ate at Le Cellier there, I had the best steak in my life. And here at Canada that we tried the Le Cellier Wild Mushroom Beef Filet Mignon with truffle butter sauce. Oh, man, my mouth was already watering. Even cutting it with that plastic knife, it was slicing through. It was so, so tender. And as I was biting into it, I just kept thinking to myself, oh, I just it reminded me of that steak that I had again. So Canada, you know how to do steak. I give props to all the chefs that make the steak. You don't need any other steak sauce, plain and simple. However they prepare it, that's how it's going to melt in your mouth. Yes. Yeah, so if you like steak, what you need to do is you need to walk over to Canada and just get in line and buy this Le Cellier steak. Um, it was so funny while we were waiting for our steak in line. He just kept saying one steak all day, two steaks all day, three steaks all day because everybody was ordering it. Then we went to Earth Eats to get the kombucha because I love kombucha. So I got the kombucha flight. Robert's not so crazy about kombucha, but no. <laughs> typically kombucha is gluten-free, um, but the drinks aren't labeled. So if you're concerned, definitely ask the cast member there. Um, but the kombucha flight was $6 and you got to try the green apple, the pineapple passion fruit, and the ginger lemon. So the first one that I tried, I believe that was the ginger lemon, then... 
I tried the pineapple passion fruit. I think that was my favorite one of out of all three. It had more of that fruity flavor, which is right here um, shown. And then I believe the green apple was last, but I just really enjoyed it. And so if you like kombucha, I definitely recommend that you head over to Earth Eats to get some of that. <laughs> I'm telling you people, kombucha is either you're gonna like it or you're going to say, no it's way. It's like a fermented tea. No and it's really good way. for your gut. <laughs> no. It's healthy for you. <laughs> so definitely, that's, you know, the only place that I know of that you're going to get it um, there at Epcot. All right, next was Hawaii. Um, that uh, Over there in Hawaii, the only thing that they had on their menu was the passion fruit cheesecake with toasted macadamia nuts that was gluten-free. So since this is just all gluten-free, that's all that they had for us. So... As you can see that this passion fruit cake, it, it was small, but we were like, hmm, this is kind of interesting. But when it comes to cheesecake, hey, we're all in. Cheesecake this, cheesecake that. Mm -hmm. We're going to dive into this. As everybody can see, I'm showing everybody, it just looks delicious. The, the way they put it together, it's not a traditional looking cheesecake, but it still makes it inviting to us. And knowing that it's Hawaiian and macadamia nuts cheesecake, hey, you can't go wrong. So, and it was delicious. Like, it, like some people would say, hey, if it has anything to do with cheesecake, I'm all in. And they were playing Hawaiian music. So, you know, while we're standing there, there was the whole ambiance. There was also some people to the side working on a building. The noise was kind of really annoying. But this cheesecake was very good. I love cheesecake, macadamia nuts. I was wondering um, how they were going to make it gluten-free. And in this case, it looks like they just left off uh, the crust. So there was no crust to it. Um, but I really enjoyed it. So definitely recommend if you like cheesecake, head on over to Hawaii. This is the Food and Wine Festival building. If you signed up for a seminar or demonstration, that's where you're going to go. It's in World Showcase near Ireland. So check that out. Next, we went over to France. In France, we had the creme brulee with house-made chocolate hazelnut cream. So the creme brulee, as here we're handing our order to the cast member and, and waiting for our dessert. But this creme brulee was a winner for me. I liked it. It had that classic uh, hard shell candy top on it. And it just was creamy. The chocolate hazelnut cream uh, was hiding down there uh, at the bottom but I did really enjoy this um, creme brulee is a classic uh, gluten-free dessert at many restaurants so definitely familiar with um, the taste of that but yeah I really enjoyed it so what did you think <laughs> the funnest part about this creme brulee that I that I always like is because it's got that hardened candy shell that's on top that's hiding the creaminess underneath. And then when you mix it together, you got that little bit of crunch and the creamy. It makes a nice delight. But that was one of my favorites is like, hey, let's go ahead and like bust through it like some ice. <laughs> anyway, but no, the, the richness of it, you taste the macadamia um, cream. I mean, not macadamia, my bad, forgive me. It's the hazelnut, chocolate hazelnut cream. And it was really good, um, just melted. It was already melting in your mouth anyways. Um, with the candy flavoring and and uh, the, the everything about the texture, sometimes when you're eating it, you're not thinking about anything else. But man, this is just really good. And then we headed to a location I was waiting for all day, Brazil. Why did I wait want to go to Brazil? Because they have Brazilian cheese bread that's gluten free. They also had crispy pork belly but I was really 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 excited about trying that gluten-free cheese bread look at the line for it it's massive it I mean the line seemed to go pretty fast but it was pretty crazy looking at it now here's the crispy pork um 
what was it called? The crispy pork belly. And so the actual pork belly um, had a lot of flavor to it. It was really good. Um, it came with black beans, tomato, and onions. Um, so basically, it was just that. <laughs> the black beans, tomato, and onions. I didn't taste any extra seasoning or anything like that. So that part of it, to me, uh, didn't have a lot of flavor. Um, but I enjoyed it. I wouldn't purchase it again. But if somebody were to purchase it for me, I'd eat it. <laughs> so that's what I thought of that. Robert doesn't eat pork, so he didn't try this one. And then next... We, of course, tr both tried that cheesy bread. And why was I so excited about it? Because gluten-free bread, good gluten-free bread, is not easy to come by. That is so true. We've been gluten-free for, I don't, know, I don't know, seven years now or something like that. And um, we've tasted some really bad bread <laughs> that's supposed to be gluten-free. But the Brazilian, the way they did this of... of melting in the cheese, baking it within the bread and keeping the bread soft. Every bite was just a tasty morsel. Just really, really good. And we went back several other times. So yeah, definitely recommend the cheesy bread. And as you can see by the line, it's not the secret's out. The secret is out. <laughs> We're not the only ones who like this cheesy bread. So I would definitely highly recommend it. So check it out next we went over to spain and at spain we had the seafood salad with shrimp bay scallops mussels extra virgin olive oil white balsamic vinegar and smoked paprika so this dish <laughs> is packed with protein so much protein. It was a little overwhelming, really. I mean, the taste was good. Um, so if you like all of those things, I'm sure you'll like the salad. But for me, it was just too much protein. <laughs> it is a cold salad, so it is nice on a hot day. But personally, I wouldn't get it again. But hey, you may really, really enjoy it. All right, next we handed over to India. Just letting everybody know I'm Indian food is not really my favorite, but it had gluten-free madras red curry. They had the roasted you know, cauliflower, the baby carrots, the chickpeas. And, of course, Uncle Ben's basmati rice and everything. So look at the texture. I'm not big on the rice, but I was like, you know what? I got to mix all this together. So if I'm going to try this, I want to try it right. I want to get the flavorings all together. But mainly, I was just making sure I just didn't have just plain white rice. I need to have it. But after the first taste, I was impressed. Um, the way all the flavors uh, mixed mixed together. And um, man, I really enjoyed the cauliflower and the chickpeas. It just, uh, I just like, you know what? I need to finish this <laughs> bite after bite after bite. I was really surprised. I would definitely get this uh, dish again. So when I give it uh, out to India, I'm not an India fan for the food. But this definitely, for sure, definitely get it again. And then we head uh, headed on over to the islands of the Caribbean where we did the jerk, well, I did, the jerk spice chicken with roasted sweet plantain salad and mango chutney yogurt. I was too full at this point. I felt like I was going to explode. This was our last one, so I let him try it. <laughs> <laughs> and I wasn't too far behind, but uh, um, when it, anything comes with uh, chicken and, and comes with with fruits and vegetables, hey, I'm on board. And the way they did that chicken, the way they charred it, the way they seasoned it, that, that jerk chicken, I found my, my mouth was just exploding with saying, hey, feed me more, feed me more, <laughs> put more of that chicken in here. And I just did. It was just, it was just incredible. Um, we, nothing, at all the places that we went through that day, all the food was flavorful it was bountiful i wish that they were just a little bit more but then we wouldn't have gotten to the point to that day but um for the islands of caribbean jerk chicken definitely um, you can't go wrong with the jerk chicken all right well that was our gluten-free journey so let's check out what we came back to the festival and got again 
What did we come back to eat again because we liked it so much? Ha, number one, Active Eats. Man, that salmon. Woo! Get, can't get enough of that salmon. Number two, from Canada, that filet mignon. Canada knows how to do steak. I was never a steak eater, but man, that's phenomenal stuff. And of course, last but not least, Brazil, the cheesy bread. Mwah! Awesome. All three of these, you cannot go wrong. And you can go back and have them over and over and over. Also at the Food and Wine Festival, they have an Eat to the Beat concert. Uh, so you can look at the schedule and see what artist is going to appear when you're there. Uh, the night that we were there, it was Tiffany. So here's a little clip from that. Hey, thanks for watching. And if you've been to the Food and Wine Festival, comment below. We'd love to hear what you think. Travels, Travels with, with the Baldy Locks. Like us on Facebook. And subscribe to us on YouTube.